Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, GCRB Kraus. We're here. We have, uh, we've begun the Bumblecast. We have begun November somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it just like January yesterday? January 2001. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Good times. And then I blinked. And now we're here with that... questions from our patrons over at patreon.com slash bumblecast, kofi.com slash bumblecast, and our YouTube members. Boy, this show's a train wreck already. Slow motion, uh -huh. of course. But, you mm -hmm. know. Do stay tuned to the end because we have to give our big shout out. Thank you to everyone who supported us last month. But first, we have questions. And answers, maybe. I don't know, though. I will make noises. Whether or not you think they're acceptable answers, that's entirely up to you. Okay. I'm going to make noises that may sound vaguely like the questions these fine folks have sent us. So let's go ahead and get started. Note, note to self, April Fool's Day episode, you ask questions, I reply with <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> oh, man. How many of those, how many April Fool's episode ideas do we have? Quite a few. Uh, too many. Quite too many. a few. Anyway, enough. Of enough with the jokes, let's get down to business. This is very important. Here's this one from Alex KR. Big's Big Adventure from the 2019 annual features an abridged retelling of issue 22. In this version of the scene, Hammer Guy from issue 1 is present at Restoration HQ shortly before the mass infection. However, in the actual issue 22, Hammer Guy cannot be seen among the extras. According to the fifth anniversary story, Familiar Territory, Hammer Guy falls to the Zombots while defending his hometown of Vista View. And since I am now the geek who has pondered this possible continuity error for an unnamed minor character, I have come to ask you for the full story of Hammer Guy. You know what? We're going to make this multiple choice. <laughs> Choose your own adventure. Either A, it was a very crowded scene, so there's all sorts of folks you wouldn't have seen necessarily in that one particular scene. You didn't see Big. In issue 22, but you still know he was there. So Hammer Guy was in the scene and managed to get back to Vista View before the bunker fell, but still fell to Vista View. Option two, that was his twin brother. Option three, it was actually an illusion by the Phantom Ruby, and this entire series has been a fever dream, a long con by Infinite. And Sonic IDW number 100 is going to reveal that none of this actually ever happened. It was just infinite being a troll. I hope it's that one. <laughs> because I, of course, I would hope it's that one. <laughs> Marking Kyle down for chaotic evil. All right, that tracks. <laughs> At least chaotic neutral. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question from Alolan Figment. Sega is making another All-Stars game, but this time it's a platform fighter, and you have complete creative control. What would be your top priorities, and why is Discord starting on a Twitter about over-representation of Skies of Arcadia? <laughs> no, I would show a modicum of restraint. I would... So basically, All-Star Smash Brothers, which... Goodness, why do we not have it yet? We have yes. Nicktoons before we have a Sega Smash Bros. Ah. Yes, it would be Sega All Stars All Stars Brawl. Yeah, I would want as much equal representation as possible across the brands. So your principal protagonist and if they're uh, leading other. So if we're talking Skies of Arcadia, that would be Vise and Aka. I know Vice is the one that everyone goes with. I prefer that myself, but if we're looking at the naming conventions, it's probably Visay. Visay and Aka, Sonic and Amy, um, Ulala, and I don't know Space Channel 6 well enough to say. Yeah, I can tell because it's Space Channel 5. Yeah, you know that one. <laughs> In this region, it's Channel 6, okay? Maybe south of the border, it's Channel 5. Maybe. Oh. Um, <laughs> and then one. Uh, principal antagonist. So if it's Sonic, either Eggman or Metal Sonic. Uh, if we're talking Skies of Arcadia, it would probably make the most sense to be Ramirez. I mean, I know Galcine is like the big bad, but Ramirez is really like the iconic in... Yeah, whatever. 
Uh, I don't know how that would work across all brands. Like, how do you make the distinction But in Choo Choo Rocket? Maybe it'd be better to just have the Choo Choo's as kind of one collective Pikmin-esque, Ice Climbers-esque amalgamation. And then the Neku Neku is the other one. I don't know how it'll pan out, but try to do some of the most you know iconic of the Sega brands. So obviously Sonic, your Yakuza. Um, Rise Star. Oh, yeah, eh, you know, Nights in the Dream before Rise Star. Let's be honest. Why yeah. not both? I mean, both would be great, but and then you'd go for some of your more deep cut stuff. Your Burning Rangers, your Skies of Arcadia. If we're gonna be honest, um, maybe a couple joke characters in there, like the Daytona car, Billy Hatcher. Daytona Billy Hatcher needs car. to be acknowledged. Yeah, and House of the Dead, preferably with and... keyboards. <laughs> and you know one stage per you know franchise that's represented and then if there's a limitation on you know the roster then represent more games with more stages at the very least yeah you know maybe the panzer dragoon saga isn't going to be a good fit for a fighter necessarily then do at least a panzer dragoon stage and you know we don't want Sonic to be overrepresented as he so often is. Mm-hmm. So bring in the assist trophies, you know, bring that concept back and throw those characters in throughout. So do you know, it, just, it all comes down to budget, but I'd want it to be as big a love letter to the franchises, to Sega's history as possible. Mm-hmm. Kind of a little bit of streets of rage and golden ax in there. Oh yeah, absolutely. So like some Hagar, or Blaze, or both. A little bit of, of uh, shoot, Tyrus Flare, Gilius mm-hmm. Thunderhead, mm-hmm. and of course, mm-hmm. Death Adder. Absolutely. <laughs> Gotta have Death Adder. He adds death. I mean, what what else can he ask for? <laughs> uh, you gotta have the Angry Birds in there now, because oh, why not? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, Joker and Bayonetta already have the movesets, just lift them wholesale. <laughs> <laughs> screw it bring him over uh i mean honestly the hero character from panzer dragoon you could make a character and just have him summon the dragon as like a final smash type attack yeah maybe i mean on the <laughs> one hand it's like you don't really want to play as the puny squishy human you want to play as the dragon mm. but i mean F Zero didn't have an actual rep until they kind of invented Captain Falcon for it. So I didn't invent Captain Falcon. He was there from the start. It was just he, you had to have like the a, manual. It wasn't like like a fully realized character. He was a name in a manual. Well, he, he had a, a he, he had art. He was a car, and they turned him into a punchy man, the greatest punchy man that ever punchy 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 punched. But that's true. Yes, you are right. Also, you got to have a little bit of uh, Fighting Vipers and uh, some Virtua Fighter, of course. All those reps. You need those. You need those. And what else? What else do you need in a Sega fighter? I don't know. Uh, Wreck-It Ralph and Danica Patrick. How about that? (laughs) I mean, you need Sagata Sanchiro. Yeah, obviously. I mean, I figured he kind of goes goes without saying. (laughs) Uh, Hatsune Miku, yeah, yeah. I forget she's Sega. I know, it's weird, but yeah. <laughs> yep, it's true. Um, yeah, that's about it. I, I think there's also, there's all sorts of characters that could be in there. If we didn't n- name your favorites, uh, I'm sorry. There's so many, but, you know, we we've mentioned Yakuza, so get some of those guys in there. Uh, they would be really brutal, though. I don't know. Could we have an M-rated <laughs> platform brawler? I mean, if, if they can figure out how to make Solid Snake acceptable within Smash. I mean, that's true. Nakaza all ages. Uh, that's true. People up. Uh, that's true. Yeah. I mean, when your special is just to haul a bike out of nowhere and beat Sonic over the head with it. That's good fun. <laughs> that's fun for the whole family. Yeah, yeah. We need to have DLC characters, and I guess Shadow would have to be one of those. Mm-mm. So people can be disappointed that Shadow's not in there from the start, but you know, then you have the hype. Hey. Then you get the hype train going for Shadow coming in later. Kept you waiting, huh? <laughs> I want that just for him to pop out of the cardboard box for no particular reason. Uh huh. 
Yep. And then he's just a Sonic clone. <laughs> oh, wait. Me. No, wait. Hold on. Chaotic Never mind. Evil. Chaotic evil. In the game. Well, okay. Yeah. That's just him in general. Anyway, <laughs> we have spent way too long on this question. <laughs> so let's move on. Here's one from Andrew D. I was hoping you could clear up a timeline question of mine. Recently, you stated that Sonic 06 happens after Sonic Rush. Some people say that means that Sonic Rush Adventure happens after 06 due to your wording. But about seven months ago, you stated that Sonic Rivals was also after Sonic 06. Does this mean that Eggman Nega didn't introduce himself as Eggman's descendant until after his alliance with Eggman and Rush? Can you clarify the order of the Rush Rivals and 06 games and how it works with Eggman Nega's introductions as to who he is? Did Eggman know that Nega was his descendant while working with him? I'm going to have to respectfully decline because this is basically a backdoor into getting me to reveal the whole timeline one way or another. You know, you said this game and this game, but what about this game and this game? And then people will piece it together. And I'm not at liberty to do all that. So suffice to say, there is a timeline we're working with. Hopefully that can be made public eventually. And, you know, you can pick it apart once it's out. But I, I'm not going to get into this particular realm of what came after what and when and where anymore. Alrighty. Here's one from Awe Blue Sky. What would Sonic Silver and Shadow get at McDonald's? Sonic would get whatever was the big promotional item back when they were doing toys at McDonald's because brand synergy. <laughs> uh, Silver is just amazed that you can go up to a place, talk to the window box and they give you food. In his time, you were lucky to have windows. And here, they give you flapjacks, just like that, McGriddles, whatever they're called. Give him. Also, Happy Meal, because toys are fun. <laughs> and yeah, pretty much. Shadow just gets a coffee. Black. Beans only, no water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's pre-ground? Fine. <laughs> Here's a question from Ava. Hypothetically, we didn't think that Omega would try to destroy cybernetic limbs using Eggman tech. However, how would he react to Surgeon Kit, since they have a lot of Starline and Eggman technology in them? Would he see them as all those Eggman's robots? <laughs> I don't know if he would really care to make the distinction of where the line is between Starline stolen implemented Egg tech and just plain Egg tech. But they're also not robots. I think that's his hang up is the mass produced wantonly deployed cheaply made and with very little thought badniks versus him the absolute pinnacle of robotic construction and he gets locked away in the storage closet no will not stand everyone will pay for this embarrassment surgeon kit while they are augmented are still people they're living things and He'll shoot them if he's given good cause, sure. But I don't think they fall fall under the umbrella of his personal vendetta. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, I guess he's kind of picky on what is actually an Eggman's robot, huh? I mean, he seemed to give Gemeral a pass in the comics. So True. if he's able to make that distinction, I don't think Surgeon Kit would really immediately register on his radar. Yeah, yeah. Might not realize it at first. Maybe if someone told him. Maybe. Maybe. Here's a question from Batman 69 Law. What if Eggman, after another plan, thwarted by that blasted blue hedgehog, decides to go to the bar where everyone knows your name? How would a Sonic and Cheers crossover go? <laughs> <laughs> He'd be like sitting on one side of the bar or like in a booth by himself because nobody likes hanging out with him. Because he's just such a toxic individual. <laughs> And then whatever B-plot is happening along, he'll interject himself into the conversation where he's not wanted and offer his insight. And it's usually terrible. It's incredibly selfish. It's not helpful at all. He misses, the, he's completely tone deaf on what the interpersonal issues are. And then every now and again, he'll offer one little nugget of wisdom that's actually universal, actually kind of helpful. Maybe it's because he's had a couple of loggers and he's not thinking straight, but... You know, there'll be that one moment where the audience goes, ah, oh, and you're like, okay, maybe there is something to this guy. And then, you know, he steals all the bar peanuts. <laughs> maybe he's a little bit of Cliff. <laughs> a little Cliffy. <laughs> uh, I mean, of course, uh, Starline's there in, Fra <laughs> in Fraser's seat because, I mean, they're the same character, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
Back to Fraser Crane. Hey, listen to your show. You're not nearly as smart as you think you are. And thus, you know, he gets into a fight. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yep 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 here's a question from ben r ian in an earlier episode you said if surge were to ever become self-aware she would do everything in her power to break free of the comic book and hunt you down well guess what she has and she is what will you do to save yourself short term and long term i'll just get my affairs in order <laughs> basically we're all done for if that happens yeah like Make it as clear as possible that I am away from large city centers where there would be collateral damage and just kind of wait. Yeah. Do my best to mitigate the damage. And you, you can't run from that. No. You know, I, at best, <laughs> being passive and acceptant of my fate might piss her off enough that she decides not to murderize me. You know, I've taken all the fun out of it. There's no chase. There's no terror. There's no, you know back and forth it's just yeah you're gonna annihilate me i ain't gonna be able to stop you so here i am <laughs> would you uh, would you apologize or no or would you I know what i was doing or would you say thank you <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get on the day if you want to get but, particularly uh, dark <laughs> you see, the real key to it is to get her decided to one do it one way or the other uh -huh. before she has time to actually think because so, once she realizes that i am purposefully trying not to get others caught in the crossfire mm -hmm. then she will actively start attacking others just to make it my problem and there's no <laughs> counter to that so the best i can do is to keep the focus on me let her have her way and then she can go home and nobody else has to deal with it and then Aaliyah comes out and takes her out while you've got her distracted. <laughs> oh, she can revise the next script once her, she goes back to you know her own meta universe. <laughs> By God, it's Aaliyah with the steel chair. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little zappy. <laughs> it's a little conductive. <laughs> Here's one from Butter Noodles. What would a Bumble King and Buck Bumble crossover be like? You know what? I have spent entirely too much time working on hypothetical dev docs on a revival of Buck Bumble. Really? Okay. Are you are you serious? I want that so bad. <laughs> it is such a fantastic premise uh -huh. and world and that theme song. It is in your head right now. I mean, obviously. You you were listening to it the minute you read the words Buck Bumble. Right about you now, listened. it's time to rock with the Biggity Buck yeah, Bumble. Yeah, the Biggity Buck Bumble. Yeah. So <laughs> I got, like, the announcement trailer planned out in my head. I know how to do, like, the controls, the weapon loadout. Whoever owns Buck Bumble, just give me money and authority to produce and direct this thing because I need to get it out of my system. Oh, man, it might be owned by Ubisoft still. Oh, well. Yeah, Red so Facebook. so probably never going to see it, but, you know, maybe. Maybe Argonaut did hold on. Well, no, I don't think Argonaut exists anymore. <sighs> the monkey's paw curls. Yeah. Ubisoft calls me up. So we heard you want to do Book Bumble. Yeah, we love the premise, but make it a rabbit's game. No! No. <laughs> oh, Buck Bumble. Uh, made by Argonaut Games. Argonaut Software. Same uh, developers as good old Star Fox. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I think I'm down. We need to bring that back. You didn't answer this question, though. You didn't answer the actual oh. question. Like, a, well, a Bumble, Bumble King, King. Like, you know. Bumble the... King is my brand. So, you know, there you go. Bumble King Games. Now it's a studio. It is producing <laughs> the much anticipated revival of Buck Bumble. I think. Oh, I think they're thinking of like the 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 alligator. Yeah, but there isn't really the, like any crossover there. It's a it's a icon. It's a graphic. It is indicative of a brand. It is, there isn't like a lore bit to it. He didn't come so, up with Bumble King lore, man. <laughs> he is the king of bees. That is also an alligator. That's as far as it goes. Oh, so you make it a collectible within the game. <laughs> Oh, okay. I guess we'll do that then. <laughs> you find all the Bumble King icons in the playthrough, and you unlock the Bumble the Bumble Cannon. All the bees love the Bumble King. 
you go. <laughs> Bumble can is a one sh- one shot instant kill ray gun. <laughs> what were you going to say? I was probably going to fumble over some words and make this a not a family friendly show, but that would have been <laughs> unintentional. Oh man. Also, the sound that the ray gun makes is just me going ee- into the mic. <laughs> <laughs> and as you hold down fire it's a concentrated beam and the buck bumble theme plays as you're firing it <laughs> oh so it's like the uh it's the dubstep gun from saints row yes, yes. <laughs> same thing go. same thing all right all right i dig it no reload but this is like the post game fun gun yeah 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 here's a question from chaos sonic one why you don't like nega Considering that while it looked like he died in Sonic Rivals 2, which was in 2007, he returned in the Manga Sonic comic in October 2016 in the chapter Evil Daily Routine, with him at the end drawing scribbles on a normal Eggman. Any reason if Nega is dead? That's N-E-G-A, by the way. You know, we're going to make this multiple choice. Choose your own adventure. Either A, it was some kind of prequel comic, B... A funny little goof comic off to the side that isn't in canon. Or C, all part of Infinite's ability to troll outside of the comic universe. He's in your head. And once you wake up, you will realize that this show and everything that you have enjoyed about Sonic for the past 30 years has all been a lie. Mm, yeah. Well, that would be fine. I'd be okay with that, at least. I'm probably the only one who would be. I'm being told that you need to stop trying to stop his return. I will staunchly stand against his return. He is bad. Can they give him another name? At least, like, please. I don't want to have to say this anymore. Give him a toe tag. Mm. Mm. Cool Christy One has a question. Why is Sonic the Hedgehog movie Dr. Robotnik's actor Jim Carrey instead of Jim Cummings from the Saturday morning cartoon Sonic the Hedgehog series? Do you think it's weird that Jim Carrey wants to retire from the movie franchise? Hey, this is two questions. It's Jim Carrey because, with all respect to Mr. Cummings, he doesn't sell movie tickets. He is an incredibly versatile voice actor and incredibly influential on you know, my generation and many after. But he is not Hollywood star Jim Carrey. That's why. I, uh, I, I don't know if Jim Cummings has done much screen acting, actually. So I don't think so. And he's also, he's old. Is it he is Wait, he's up there. Not to be ageist, but you know, acting is physically demanding. So, you know, he may not have the stamina for such a thing. Uh he also doesn't really look the part. So I mean, he's just a, a cuddly <laughs> fellow. I mean, neither is Jim Carrey neither does Jim Carrey to be fair, but they made it work. Jim Carrey can be Jim Carrey can be threatening though. Yeah, they made it work, you know. I mean, it's a cable guy, so <laughs> Yeah, I I liked his version of Robotnik. I ah. liked it a lot more than I thought it would. I do. Um, I do, too. As for why he's retiring, probably because he's tired. <laughs> I mean, he was retired for, you know, not retired, but, like, just on break for years, and then Sonic is where he sort of came back. So, like if like his career has been, you know, revolved around creative expression, and if he, if he has achieved what he's wanted to achieve, he's done. You know, don't keep doing what you're doing because you're expected to if you don't have to if he if he has no passion for it anymore if he figures he's done let the man retire let him be done yeah he owes us nothing <laughs> let him take a break let him take a break here's a question from crab huzzah maria's revived after shadow figures out she isn't a clone robot phantom ruby illusion hallucination manifestation of trauma etc how much bubble wrap and bulletproof plating is he wrapping her in to make sure nothing bad ever happens to her again? <laughs> None. He's not going to impede her daily life, but he's not going to be more than like two feet away at any given time. <laughs> you know, if she's crossing the street and somebody just happens to go over the stop line, even an inch into the pedestrian crosswalk, that car is going to go into orbit. Yeah. You know, if somebody forgets to put out a wet floor sign, that entire section of floor is just going to be gone and then rebuilt before she can approach it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If somebody sneezes without wearing a mask, they lose their face. He's just going to be everywhere. Terrible. 
awful. I think I think Maria would be like she would hate this. Oh yeah, like the first few gestures of overprotectiveness is understandable. I'm assuming she has context for what's gone on in the past fifty something years, but then eventually, you know, shout out. She needs to be able to like cut this loaf of bread. You can't sand off the sharp edges of every knife in the house. She's a very competent girl. She doesn't need safety plugs over over ever over every outlet just let her be let her live stop it yeah yeah mm, mm. it was just a sneeze due to allergies she doesn't need to be forced into bed with chicken soup stop it here's a question from domino speaking of shadow shadow wielding guns what are both of your opinions on it personally i love it but can understand sega's pushback on it it's not shadow wielding weaponry so much as it's semi-realistic firearms that's the issue, at least for me. I think it's goofy, and it's one of the reasons why I couldn't take Shadow seriously. Like, Shadow, I can see using whatever means necessary to accomplish his goals. Now, I think he is fast enough that by the time someone aims, pulls a trigger, and shoots, he's already taken care of the problem. And that's even without a Chaos Emerald, so a little irrelevant. But if, you know, he thinks that bazooka is going to be able to bring down the helicopter, he's going to shoot the bazooka. If he needs to chip away at the armor around that egg boss robot with that gun of some caliber he'll shoot it up and then finish it off himself that i don't have an issue with i am personally very entertained with the idea of him ripping a stop sign out of the road and beating somebody with it i that's mean fantastic that's funny that's great <laughs> it's when you have like gun guns in this world of talking cartoon animals that i get a little on i mean to be fair at the time it was real earth it was human earth yeah where they wouldn't so, have like funny cartoon laser guns so if they were to update it you know going forward that he's picking up ray guns sure that's fine wisp bonds mm -hmm. that's fine so yeah <laughs> yeah i yeah. don't think we're going to see it again because i'm pretty sure that well is good and properly poisoned but well, i mean i don't know Somehow Shadow cocked an uh, uh, SMG, so he has no idea That's how guns I, actually work. That's why I say semi-realistic, because... Uh, <laughs> I mean, that is a thing now, after Shadow the Hedgehog. Not before, so... My God, I don't, inspired. I don't know if it was inspired or if it just happened to be a coincidence. <laughs> Oh, well, wouldn't be the first time Sonic or Knuckles ever used a gun. All right. Here's a question from Endabend. Say you had the chance to bring Hope Kintobor into the main Sonic canon as Hope Robotnik, I suppose. What sort of relationship would she have with modern Eggman? I can't imagine they'd be close at all, but considering he's not as ruthless as Robo Robotnik was, I can see them having some kind of interesting interactions. Eggman blew up a planet to fuel an amusement park. <laughs> That's pretty darn ruthless. It's not as ruthless. Oh, come on. Come on. That's not that bad. He shut Sonic in a capsule and shot him into space and then blew him up. Yeah, but Sonic's He's fine. <laughs> Eggman wasn't planning on that. <laughs> he wasn't going, ooh, hopefully he'll be able to pull Chaos Control out of his bot and be able to escape. <laughs> no, he's going to blow him up. He was going to turn him into cobalt confetti. Yeah. Ruthless. <laughs> I mean, he did blow up the mood, half the mood at least. Yeah, as a warning shot. He's ruthless. <laughs> blew up all over it. <sighs> We're not having a power level discussion over <laughs> ruthlessness. Eggman's a bad man. <laughs> and to that end, Hope would want nothing to do with him. It would basically be what we had in the comic, is she hates the fact that she is associated with him and would do everything she could to counter him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Alrighty, here's one from Hearts13. Regarding that what-if scenario of what if Whisper killed Eggman, do you think there could be a scenario that could somewhat mend Tangle and Whisper's friendship? If so, then what would that redemption arc look like? What kind of trials and tribulations would Whisper have to go through in order to, in order to restore the love and trust of her friends? I could see Tangle and Whisper going to couple counseling about it. Uh, it's been a while. I don't remember what we said. But I think the premise is pretty self-explanatory. Like, the, like the, apparently there was no coming back from it, I think is what you said. Like <sighs> if she went through with it, like, there would be... There... But... 
there's always a writing prompt and there is always a workaround. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, as they say, time heals all wounds. And if Whisper were to, you know, make a point of showing that she was backing away from her more murderizing ways, you know, trying to build constructively, maybe she retires the variable wisp on, you know, lets the wisps be free. Maybe she does more humanitarian work and gives up the sniper life and shows that she's put that behind her. You know, Tangle would, you know, come around because she's the affable sort. I mean, still not happy with the whole, you know, murder thing, but she also kind of gets it. So with time and talk and understanding, there there might be a reconciliation. It was it was just one time. It was only one murder. <laughs> <laughs> it's not who it was. It's the principle of the matter. Ah. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Here is one from Icon PNG. I don't know if you can answer this, but if you were to make three significant changes to the current story of Sonic Adventure to enhance it and further develop it, what changes would you make? I feel like you've talked about this before. It's like if you were doing a a Shadow remake. Or not a Shadow remake, sorry. A Sonic Adventure remake. Well, I don't know what I would have said back then. But right now, nothing immediately springs to mind. Like, I would have liked to have had more time with... You know, Tails and Amy, uh, maybe big if you fix the gameplay. But everybody's arc is pretty well established and utilized within the context of the game itself. Adding more playtime would be, as long as it's not really necessarily story related. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe do more with Cream's cameo. Uh, maybe be a little more overt with what happened to to Call and Chaos at the end, so that would be available down the line. But Adventure's story, from what I remember, is, yeah, pretty good as it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just kind of, you can uh, tweak it a little bit here and there, you know. Maybe make it a little less 2000s video (laughs) gamey. I mean, like, look at the core story. Sonic's has a, you know, world of trap, well, region traveling adventure, looking for the Chaos Emeralds and fighting Dr. Eggman. That's as classic Sonic as you can get. Oh, yeah. Tails has a moment of aspiring to be, you know, at Sonic's side and to prove himself worthy of being Sonic's friend and sidekick. Amy finds it within herself to rescue herself and step out of Sonic's shadow to be Mm self-reliant. Knuckles is kind of on the fringe in his own personal quest, but that's fine because he's the cool standoffish guy back then, at least, before he kind of got lumped in with the group. Gamma is freaking amazing. You know, the Ronin Samurai going around taking out his own kind to free the creatures within, meeting his <laughs> own end at the hands of his upgraded brother. Gamma's great. Oh, yeah. And then Big is the kind of comedy side option, the incidental. He doesn't really affect the story. He's just there, and I love it. <laughs> so, no, adventure's, you know, just fine. Yeah. yeah. Also, you know, the whole thing about to call and chow murder and whatnot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't worry about that. Good excuse to bring back the Chow Garden, though. (laughs) All right. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll get back with more on the Bumblecast. We're back, and we got a question from Mixiger17. Surge discovers the awful, awful truth. While Kit was just a happy-go-lucky kid with the same plot-convenient orphan status as everyone not named Cream who got kidnapped, she was the president of her local Sonic fan club, complete with all the official merchandise and a few unofficial ones she destroyed that Kit was sworn slash threatened a secrecy about. (laughs) The Sonic body pillow that says, gotta go fast! Describe the ensuing rampage fueled by her raw fury. Play it a completely silent sequence. (laughs) <laughs> establishing shot of the room still dark but there's enough ambient light to make out what's going on camera behind surge at this low angle so she's almost like overwhelmed with this room mm-hmm. number of panning shots of the memorabilia as it goes from just fun sonic collectibles to a little too interested in sonic to outright obsession Cut the surge in profile with this look of abject horror and confusion and disgust 
and a slow transition of panels of just the mounting anger as the anger overwhelms everything else. Oh, no. And then like a two page sequence of her very meticulously taking apart everything, ripping down posters, beheading statues, crushing memorabilia looks at that pillow with just the worst snarl imaginable and shoots a bolt of lightning to just blow it up. So there's feathers or marbles or whatever is in that pillow goes flying overhead shot of her standing in this still dark room with the ruin all around her. And she's just trembling with impotent rage. And then she walks out and closes the door behind her. Damn. I was waiting for the joke, but this isn't a joke. Ah, dude, this is, this is, (laughs) This is fertile ground. This is, this is this is the stuff that's going to get you murderized when Surge comes to the real world. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Uh too bad it's a fan idea and you can't use it. Here's one from Noni. Stole this question from Rabbit Haver. Which would you rather have as a pet for the Bumble Compound? A chow with an unsettlingly realistic human face that likes to stare at you ominously? A wisp with tiny and deeply unnerving human hands that must be moisturized daily? Or a cocoa with fleshy, hyper-realistic human feet that really likes to run on hardwood? The wisp without hesitation. Really? I will will buy the wisp all the hand lotion it needs. It has perfectly capable hands it can moisturize its own hands they're smart yeah they're dexterous it can handle itself the cocoa that would just be annoying a little unsettling but annoying the chow we were talking about sega ips earlier all i'm imagining is a seaman version of chow that's what i said when noni was drawing this because this like has art room, you kind of jump back as this chow looks up at you and goes hello <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You have been away from the Bumble offices for three days. I'm going... Please feed uh, me a chow nut. I'm but, going... Uh, no. I'm no, going, no, 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 no. I'm going to show you this horrifying image, and it's probably also going to be this episode's thumbnail. <sighs> Just so you know. Okay. <laughs> is this the chat or in the DMs? It is sending it to you as a DM. It's in the chat, but it'll get lost in there. So, Or it's... Yeah, it's already gotten lost, so... It, Check your yeah, DM. No, I, I, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. That, <laughs> the wisp is worse than I imagined. Yeah. But I stand by my decision because it can moisturize its own hands. I don't have to deal with it. <laughs> I feel like the Coco is the least cursed looking one. That almost looks like Kirby. Kinda. Like if Kirby took his shoes off. That's <laughs> that's gross, but not bad. But no, Chow Takai, not, not handling it. <laughs> Chow is terrifying. <laughs> oh, <boy. Buck-a-ba. laughs> oh I, I require uh, more trees for my Chow garden. Thank you. I, I yes, thank you, Noni. Thank you. I'm not sure if we should be thanking you or not. <laughs> oh, terrifying. Here's a question from Nate Ray. Amy slash Sonic slash Shadow as a thruple. Would it work? Polyamorous hedgehogs. If we're going into the hypothetical scenario where this would even happen, maybe. I mean, Sonic. I mean, Amy would be the one to make it work. Yeah, Sonic she does have, have two hands. <sighs> Actually, they all have two hands. Yes, they do, Kyle. Yes, they do. <laughs> now that I think about it. She would have to be the anchor point because Sonic and Shadow are fairly aloof as it is. Yeah. But you know, she's the one who makes sure that they all get together for date night or dinner or whatever. I guess. <laughs> mm, yeah. Yeah. And Amy's just looking at them. Says, now kiss. Pushes them together. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Amy. Here's one from Rabbit Haver. In the answer to a previous question, Ian said that Silver probably wouldn't be able to kill, or if he did, it would haunt him. That piqued my curiosity, and I was wondering if you'd be willing to elaborate on that. So what circumstances do you think he could get a, the cinnamon roll to take a life? I can only assume it would have to be a heat-of-the-moment mistake, as if he had a chance to think about it, we know how he shies away from the idea. 
If he did mess up that bad and kill someone, how would he deal with the aftermath? How would his friends react? How badly would it affect him? And do you think it could even be enough to break him? Depends on the scenario. Like, if he were taking out a bad man, like Eggman or Infinite or, I don't know, any of the Deadly Six, someone who's, like, quantifiably, indisputably evil, and he just happens to throw a building at them, and they don't duck. You know, <laughs> he, he was going to take him out. He just took him out a little harder than he intended, and it doesn't sit well with him because he comes from a time where all life is precious and hard to come by. And so any loss is a loss. You feel it, but they were also a clear and apparent danger to everyone else around them. So he might need to sit down with Amy a few times and talk it out blaze, especially, but he'd, he'd be all right. He'd get over, he'd get through it, especially if blaze is talking him through it. I'm sorry, blaze. I, I took a life. Who was it? Savok. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Blaze would be fine with it. Oh, Blaze is perfectly fine. She, mm -mm. yeah, yeah. If if <laughs> if she found out Whisper killed Eggman, she'd probably be like, huh, "Finally, someone did it. I was gonna do it." <laughs> yeah, no, Blaze is much more <laughs> at ease with me needing to be decisive. If it were somebody caught in like the crossfire by accident, yeah, you know, he throws that building, misses, and hits another building. He's going to be inconsolable. He is going to be a mess. And it's going to take a lot of work for him to pick himself up and just try harder to do better next time. Yeah. All right. Here's a question from Rekusant. When you write for your Sonic characters, do you make musical associations for any of them? The main cast often has theme songs, genres, or motifs. And I was wondering if you had any in mind for others. Not typically, no. Uh, because it is a silent medium, I'm not really thinking of a soundtrack for what's going on. Every now and again, there will be a particular track in my head, and I'm like, yes, this is what you should be listening to when you read this sequence. But overall, no. Mm. Alrighty. Here's one from Reckons. It's hard to imagine most of the SA1 and 2 cast taking time to raise Chow. Maybe they really want to unlock Green Hill? From those two games, how do you imagine each character's chow rearing style? And is anyone even any good at it besides Amy? And no, Team Dark j can't just refuse. Uh, Sonic, I imagine, would be good but kind of passive. Like, his chow is going to be hanging out at Tails or Amy's place. And he comes by regularly, but he's not going to be necessarily there to constantly watch over the little one. Uh, Tails and Amy are going to raise theirs just fine. N no question. No problem. Knuckles is going to train this little fellow to be his co-guardian. He's going to toughen him up. He's going to be the best power type you've ever done seen. <laughs> Shadow, largely the same as Sonic. Very uh, hands-off, but also attentive enough. Like, that child will want for nothing, except maybe a little bit of attention. But, you know... Shadow would give just enough impetus that this child would want to keep up with Shadow, would want to aspire to be as cool and as powerful as this caretaker. And that's where the Shadow com child comes from, really. Uh, Rouge? Sure. That, ch that child's going to live a lavish lifestyle. Are you kidding me? You know, maybe Rouge has gone for a few days, you know, on a mission or a heist. But she'll make sure he's taken care of. And when she's back, you know, lavish it with all sorts of lovely exquisite premiere chow treats <laughs> uh big passive but in that kind of single-mindedness that he always has you know this chow is going to be a hat a, a fat chubby happy baby premier swim type and eggman if he decides to trouble himself with it he's going to raise the best chow you've ever seen you know that omo chow project turned out a little sketchy so i guess he'll just stick with the natural water baby but this is going to be the most intelligent dark chow you've ever seen. Look at it. You've never seen a chow grow a mustache like that before. <laughs> <laughs> I think chow rearing brings out the best in everyone. Eggman will outraise everybody's, everybody else's. He wants to be the very best. Here's one from RXL. My question is, if you're allowed to share with us the general temperature at Sega in relation to their thoughts on the Avatar system implemented in Forces... 
I know the game had a mixed response, but I'm curious if Sega views that system as something they might be open to returning to at some point, or if it was one and done. I have no idea. I can't even begin to speculate. Mm. Well, it should make a Sonic MMO. I'm surprised that doesn't exist. Although <laughs> the MMO thing kind of came and went now, hasn't it really? Eh. I mean, nowadays I would think it's more of the you know character collection single player MMO type of model. Yeah. Where Genshin impacts your Azure lanes, that type of thing. But yeah. even that's that ship's already kind of sailed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even battle royales are kind of like, oh, well, you have your established ones. So trying to get into that market is a silly, silly thing. So here's a question from Scourge Time. Now I really wonder what would Scourge's mystic art be in his Tales of Symphonia adventure. <laughs> uh. I'm trying to think of a good name, but I know what it is. It's the blue tornado sonic wind type thing at SA2 and Sonic Heroes, Mm -hmm. where all the enemies are caught up in it and Scourge is humming, attacking, and beating them up as they're being flung around. (sighs) But it needs something. It needs, it can't just be a very simple name. It has to be something a little high and mighty. Admonishing Gale. There we go. (laughs) Oh, he's just saying that over and over. Admonishing Gale, admonishing Gale. <laughs> no, 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 no. You got, you got the little charge up phrase of something like, you know, you thought you could take me, you can't even comprehend me. Admonishing Gale, and pow, 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 pow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Scurvy Pirate Dog has a question. Sonic has two special women in his life. On the one hand, there's Amy, who loves him more than anything. He is her true love, and she wants him to be happy and go on adventures with him. On the other hand, there's Surge, who hates Sonic more than anything. Her hatred is get greater than the, uh, the fires of a thousand suns. She wants him destroyed in a dance on his remains. So, just for hilarity's sake, Surge and Amy swap personalities. How does it go? How does everyone react? Like, just personalities, not, like, thoughts? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> if they're aware of this sudden transition, then Amy is going to remove herself from the situation. She knows something is wrong and it needs to be taken care of. She doesn't trust herself with her own thoughts now. This (laughs) needs to be taken care of. Amy has just become rosy then? (laughs) Kinda? This is assuming that she still has her faculties. That it's just, you know, the the switch was flipped and she went from love to hate. And she knows that's not right. Mm -hmm. Likewise, Serge would go, no. No, 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 no. What is this? This is wrong. This is bad. This is somehow Sonic's fault. I'm going to kick him in the face. And then she runs up and she's like, I can't hit that beautiful face. No, wrong and bad. And she just needs some distance. She needs to figure out what's going on. Kit, fix this somehow. I don't know what's happening. (laughs) I was thinking they swap personalities, not thoughts about Sonic. Like, (laughs) I don't know. I don't know how to decide. (laughs) Well, the setup is their, their emotions towards Sonic specifically. And that's not their personality. That's the feelings towards sonic the personality is more than that yeah yeah so if we're ignoring the context of their feelings for sonic and we're just talking about their personalities then Mm. amy would still have feelings for sonic it's just she wouldn't really care how anyone else felt it would be you know what she wanted then and there and everyone else can just deal with it and surge would still you know loathe sonic but it would be a matter of for the sake of everybody else, you know, never mind her own victimization because of who he is in the universe, but everyone else, you know, bowing and scraping and worshiping and relying on him. He's just a bad drug that everyone else needs to get off of. And she will wean them of it. They're <laughs> going to go cold Turkey. Cause he's going to be cold on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I think everybody is just like, scared mm. here's a question from snow pair star fox question falco's my favorite so i'm curious how would you would approach a falco centric story you mentioned that he's the odd one out how well could he carry a story as the protagonist i see falco as the mini series hero yeah he can't carry it by himself um but he's the fascinating one to follow as a side story like who was he before he joined fox's team uh, one of the best stories there is is the one that takes place between 64 and Dinosaur Planet where you see him 
break away and kind of hook up with his old gang and go that direction. Um, in command, it wasn't as interesting when he broke off solo, but that kind of shows that he can't carry a narrative by himself, but seeing things from his perspective or, you know, having him go lone wolf or Falcon, I guess in this case <laughs> is still a lot of fun because his whole deal is that he is very self-centered and he's got the ability to back up that swagger, but it also leaves him very alone and he doesn't like it. He may not admit it, but he needs the structure. He needs the orders or the leadership or the community. He needs something to define him. Cause if he's left to his own devices, he's just a wild gun. He, he isn't, he, he kind of floats around and it's better to find when he's put up against others. Yeah. So while he doesn't like taking orders from Fox necessarily, and he's kind of tired of bailing Slippy out for pity's sake, you designed the plane, fly it straight. <laughs> the reason he's able to shine is because he's with these others. And yeah, he doesn't like being told to calm down or stay in formation or, you know, follow orders, but it also gives him something to rebel against because if he has nothing to rebel against, he has just all this aggression and swagger that goes in no direction flying off on his own fighting random dudes. There's nobody to cheer. There's nobody to be impressed. There's nobody to be thankful. It's, it's just him. So he, he's complicated like that. He needs that network to help define who he is, whether he wants to admit it or not, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is probably why he and cat don't ever seem to like last because he's got to be the center of the universe and she's just as big a personality <laughs> and she's not going to orbit him. Thank you very much. But they are so similar that they, you know, there's that attraction. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. You should write Star Fox. What the heck are we doing? with all this <sighs> sonic garbage. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question from spoiler 1001. When Sonic died in 06, did he even have time to register that he was stabbed? Or was it more like, whoa, shiny thing, and then poof, he's gone? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It seems to take him a moment to collapse. So there <laughs> might have been a few seconds of him going, well, this ain't good. <laughs> I kind of thought it was in slow motion, though, for dramatic effect. Like <laughs> It may have been. It's hard to tell with the way that some of the scenes are portrayed. Yeah, yeah. Just like a lot of other things in 06. It's really hard to tell anything. Hmm. <laughs> Here's a question from Stephen A. Ian, let's say you've been brought on board to do a Dark Tower adaptation. After Stephen King found out you can do horror well in comic form. The new series has nothing to do with the previous comics, thank God, and is an entirely a new run. But editorial is looking kindly upon you and asking, who would you recommend for the art? Who do you get to be your artist? And how do you go about adapting the Dark Tower? And King's given you permission to deviate, so you're not absolutely bound by the books. So your plans for Randall Flagg can defer to what happened in the books, as can Jake, if you feel. Do you let Roland keep the horn? Will the wheel keep spinning? Will any of this make sense to Kyle? The only mandate you have is don't forget the face of your father. Thank you, Cy. Long days and pleasant nights. Ah, <laughs> uh, God. If such a scenario landed in my lab, I don't know if I'd be so freaking intimidated by the scope of it. But I wouldn't want to do a straight adaptation. I think part of the magic of the dark tower books is the fact that they are straight prose and you are able to create your own scenarios, your own visuals, which I think is where a lot of the horror comes from because what you can come up for yourself is way worse than what someone else's definition will be necessarily art wise. I don't have anyone immediately in mind, but it would need to be someone who can craft the ethereal in a grounded way. I'm thinking of a lot of the art from like, uh, the wasteland paperback that might've been the first printing. I could be wrong. I'm just imagining the one particular illustration of Roland stepping through the door into the field of roses and looking upon the tower. And that scene is just bonkers to have this door floating in the middle of nowhere and to have this field of flowers in the tower itself spiraling up almost as if it's stabbing into the sky and Roland is this cowboy and it all 
looks right. You can readily identify what it all is, but it's all so weird together. And you have to capture that because part of the magic and part of the terror that is Dark Tower is the mundane coexisting with the fanciful that everything feels just tangible enough that when it starts to get weird, that weirdness feels tangible too. It it doesn't feel like, Oh, we're getting into the weird mystic stuff. It feels like, no, this is real. This could happen. If you found that stone circle out there, you don't go into that stone circle. You know exactly why you don't go into that stone circle. Um, what I would want to do is uh, how the movie seemed to bill itself, at least initially. And this is just one more turn on the wheel of car that this is Roland's next attempt and spoiler alert, I guess for this hypothetical, uh, I think the tragedy and the horror of Roland is that the wheel will always turn that he will never finish his quest. There will always be something he did wrong. There will always be something he forgot. There will always be something where he came up short because of a personal failing. There is no escape from the samsara. He is doomed forever to pursue this meaningless quest. And all the blood and all the horror and all the heartache that he endures each and every time does help him grow, but it's never enough. So to answer the question, will any of this make sense to Kyle? The answer is no, not really. <laughs> but that's okay man that the tr the poster for the movie where it says one more time around and he's holding the horn kyle i flipped out so freaking hard <laughs> you were ready huh i wanted it so bad and then they tried to like cram four of the books into one movie and they didn't even do a good job of it ah mm. <sighs> Now, Idris Elba as um, Roland, inspired. Like, oh my god, dude, if you needed someone to have the gravitas and the charm and the menace in just so effortlessly, oh, dead on. Perfect. <laughs> Everything else... Mm, Not so much, huh? <laughs> like, I don't know, some, some of the aspects of... I wouldn't want to hit every beat again as well because some of it is i feel like if you revisit it you lose some of the impact like jake es escaping the haunted house that is absolutely terrifying the first time through because you're envisioning it i think if you actually rendered it it would lose some of that power mm -hmm. but maybe that's just me i don't know <laughs> depends on who you get to draw it did you answer yeah. that who would you get to draw it <laughs> I, I didn't have anyone in particular in mind. It's just, it's just a, it's very tall order, the kind of balance you would need in the artwork. Because if you get too fanciful, then you lose that grounded nature. Like If it looks like cartoon characters in a cartoon world, if it looks like it's just a illustration, it, it doesn't have the same impact. But if you go with someone who is photorealistic, they may not be able to capture the more whimsical and ethereal aspects. Or, you know, if you have different artists contributing to their different strengths, it may not mesh visually. And I feel like, again, what makes Dark Tower so engrossing is it feels grounded. That you you can almost taste the dust in the air when you come to Tull. And, but this is all very much my own personal take on it. So, your mileage may vary. Mm -hmm. All right, here's a question from Thievius. Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, Eggman, and Starline are all hanging out. Why? Who cares? They hear a rustle behind them, and who could have guessed? It's Scout from Team Fortress 2. Before they can react, he throws a flashbang and says, Think fast, Chuckle Nuts, before he runs away. Everyone is flashbanged. No one could escape it. What are everyone's reactions to this travesty? This is oddly specific. I have no idea what prompted this question. <laughs> and if everyone's caught off guard equally, they're going to have the same guttural reaction anyone has when they're hit with a flashbang, which is pain and disorientation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Possibly screaming because they can't hear over the tinnitus. <laughs> it, it doesn't really matter who you are. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. And then who catches up to Scout first? Well, Sonic, obviously. Oh, okay. <laughs> who kills him first? 
toss up between Eggman and Knuckles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Luckily, he can respawn, so it's not actual <laughs> murder. Well, that's not really the lucky thing, because that's what Starline figures out. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Hey, yo, Doc, kill me already. Later. Oh, he's gonna... He's... Oh. Okay. <laughs> Here's a question from Twilord. Sorry, Ian. It seems people have been crediting me with a creation of yours. You gave a name and personhood to the idea of Shadow getting an Ellie slash Atreus death spawn. You deserve all the credit. So, uh, have the Sonic fandom... Have we ever let a named character go? No. We don't let unnamed characters go. No. We don't let go of concepts of characters. <laughs> this, the fandom will never let anything go. Have you seen no. it? Nothing will ever go. <laughs> the slap you'll, that will never that will never be let go. <laughs> the, the passion of the Sonic fandom latches on to anything and holds on to it as a cherished relic for all time. <laughs> I, th I, I think Big Oof might have actually kind of at least died down. I, I think it's mainly been just used as a joke. It'll come back. But it'll come back. <laughs> it, it will come back. It always does. And I, and I don't say that disparagingly. <laughs> at least not entirely. Maybe a little. That level of devotion is just almost surreal sometimes. You know, very, very, very few brands have that level of devotion and commitment. And there's something to be had for that passion. In a sense. Sure. And I would be the biggest of hypocrites to say I'm not part of that, too. <laughs> you, Bert, dredge up old stuff just <laughs> to make a reference to it? Just to shoehorn something in there <laughs> for the two other people in the world who will understand it? Yep. Yeah, but the three of us are going to have a grand old time talking That's about. right. That's right. <laughs> I'd, pro I'd probably be one of them. <laughs> Uh, and we got this question here from Zach D. During your previous Bumblecast, I believe you said that you think you wouldn't be able to do a classic Sonic sister series. Why is this, and does that mean the Sonic comics couldn't get a sister series of any kind? Just from my understanding, as of this recording, there are logistical issues that aren't going to really make it possible. Uh, that could change, and I am by no means at the top of the chain of command so i could be out of the loop but as far as i know that's not really in the cards right now logistical issues preventing comic book issues got it yes got it although not really preventing comic book issues because there's been a lot of like mini series and one-off specials and stuff it seems like there's practically a second sonic series as it is anyway <sighs> I, I can't get into it. In a sense. I know what you're saying, but I can't get into it. In a sense, you know. You know. Now. Well, maybe someday. All right, we got one last question left, and it's a Superstars spoiler. So, alert if you have not finished Sonic Superstars and don't want to be spoiled by what happens toward the, I guess, last half of the game. Middle? Yep. Middle? Almost the middle? Then uh, don't go any further. We'll see you next time. Here's one from OK Cheese Stick. I know you didn't really have anything to do with the game, but Trip's Superform is awesome. Assuming the floodgates on Superforms have at least been slightly cracked open, which existing character would you most like to give a Chaos Emerald power transformation to? Hard mode. You can't say Surge. I think that Amy, Knuckles, and Tails are kind of due. <laughs> Knuckles, I think, would be the easiest sell, but, you know, the principal cast are owed to a degree give give me give me super amy super tails super knuckles do it make it real and if not like a you know straight up golden super transformation then an equivalent whatever nova knuckles awesome amy <laughs> turbo tail <laughs> you couldn't do it you couldn't come up with anything else huh <laughs> no <laughs> Oh, uh, well, at least it's not Titan Tales. 
Also, Nova Knuckles is still spelled with a K. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> the K is important. <laughs> the K is the most important thing. <laughs> if there's no K, then it's not okay. But beyond that, I feel that's enough. Like, we don't need super chaotics. We don't need super cream. We don't need <laughs> uh, super zeddy. It's, nah, no, 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 no. Like, let, <laughs> let maybe the principal cast reach Sonic's level and then maybe give Sonic a, his own special one up from there. Maybe that's where Hyper comes in. But let's not go too crazy with the super forms. Because once everyone's super, nobody is. Or they're all super. I don't know, man. What I do know is we have completed all these questions. But we're not done yet because we have over 250 folks who have supported the show via Patreon, Kofi, and through our YouTube memberships. So let's give a big thank you to those folks right now. Big thank you to Daniel H., Jennifer R., John B., Robotnik, Holmes, Miss Match, Moogle, Sam Cybercat, Almighty Lantern, Andrew D., Torchbound, Mike B., Noni, Salute Your Cat, Dave M., J. Frost, Coupling Crew 128, Hero of Light 13, Do As Diz Din, Professor Scruffy Matt, Scurvy Pirate Hog, Chris A., Sony, Chaos Sonic 1, Twilord, Ben Bolt, Spain, John M., Triforce Rico, Sonic Sonic Sonic, Jib, Lisa M., Lee H. K., Joshua S., Stardust, Spectre, Chevelle, Axis, Starlight Sec, Tick Tick, Mixiger 17, Cameron H., Z Broadcast, The Discan, Jolene B., Jonathan D., Dat Guy Jimmy, Godzilla Nondal, Solaris Stain, Ava Arctic Dove, Just Mountain Soul, Alex K. R., Thievius, Quaggle Gaggle, Jennifer H, Yuma two two one, Tetsia the Wise, Indebend, Angela V, Alphamon or Yukin, Hearts thirteen, Morlis, Jack the Animator, Justin S, Sandra B H, Wildcard seven one seven, Dadler the Dalek, Sonic Legacy, Rocco D of the Stars, Genzel, Sonic eighty four, Chow Researcher and Tails, Les Daniel B, Red the Superdamic, Jarth E two hundred Paragon, Chad Puppy the Scholar. Sammy S, Icy Wolf, Miles the Power, Navare, Exodel, Agent Kaz, the Marble Gardener, Four Sonic Fan, Rhythm and Tempo, Domino AU, Oz Jam, Shimmy M, Curly Quills, Pig Dan, Derusival, Philip is Cold, Cool Christy 1, Smiley 21, Sterling Sonic, Congo, Wind Skull, Supernova, Superior Pisa, Sonic Page, Ty H, Preston M, Noah M, Michael Q, Planet Breezy, Thick Off, Omega Man 21, Kojiro Highwind, Nils, Super Sonic Fan, Chase L, Radry, Levi C, Unity, Jason G, Alolan Figment, Samoth S, SB, The ID Card, Jonathan F, Knuckle Sandwich 87, Adrian W, Zaylock Subliminal, Amazing, Glitchiest Fang in Zephyr, Gino the Puppet, Nikki Sawdust, Icon PNG, Underscore Turtle Tuck, Alejandro 333777, Loose Lemur Chicken, Vlad Kazi, Trocon H, The Phantomist, OK Cheese Stick, William M, Luke R, Michael P, North Salt 15, Relaxed Hoodie, Angel Fox Kitsune, All Peachy, Alex Crafter, Swedemo, Chunka SA, Gideon W, Boy King Elias, Caswell, Mr. Murderbird, The Giant Murdering Bird, Aster C, Soul Dice, Absalom M, Lucky Lychee, Native Nerd 27, Ultra Guy, Noob 600, S Sebastian P, Krabo, Snow Pear, Sonic Mania 2099, Hadronis, Pele, Raccoon Shinobi, Normal Person, Marcy H, David Nim Nim Nim. You did that on purpose. Alice B, Astro Speed P, Gianna S, Cat Van Bryan, The Man of Multimedia, Foofy 93, Mrs. Nippy, Florian, Call Me Ryan, Onion Girl, Candy B, A Recusant, Rohan X Low, Trevor Big Mama, DDR Master M, Beacon, Silly Sarcasm, Omega, Terra W, Blake, Miss Tangshine 97, Bert Random Space Marine, Blue Printed Salmon, Carly J, June S, Jamal S, Wheels 282 Hedgehog, Meta Mode, Frost the Hobbiton, Daniel Light, Butter Noodles, El Technopata, True Cosmic Digilab 79, Hero Squad, Kaizen the Men, Woods, Quentin D, Hedge, Supersonic Bros, Geo Knuckles, Zach D, Shadow, Sabadier Z, Alan S, Number One Emo Supersonic Fan, Damien That Hedge, Daryl, Mr. Man Baby, Rabbit Haver, Rakaians, Scourge Time, Spoiler 1001, Super Blue Light Speed, Super Luigi 018, The Mighty Gebra, TV Guru, Akar 260P, Emil C, Chaos Synth, Crab, Finest Cacophony, Happy Times, Hatok, Juan G, Saturn Flicky, Solaristain, Steph Cube, Supersonic Fan, The Internet Person, Twilord, U2 Rabbitnik, and JR Unbound. Wow, amazing. What a succulent, delicious list of names right there. Thank you, everyone. And that's going to wrap us up for this edition of the Bumblecast. Be good to yourselves, 
be good to each other, and we will see you next time with more Bumblecast. See ya! You've been listening to The Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T. Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at bumbleking.com and kngi.org. Luckily, you, you, you kept it slow, low and slow. My favorite way to fly a plane. <laughs> Actually, no, I prefer low and fast, but it, it, but it's still fun to go low and slow too. Anyway, what can I say? I'm not a young man anymore. I can't take anything that big that fast. Uh, well, you know what? <laughs> Heyo. Ah. Uh.